So a definite part of the whole family experience, one of the pinnacles of family experience is chores, right? Uh, you guys are definitely, uh, a lot of you from a generation of going, this was the nooks and crannies of family life. I grew up that way. You, uh, you didn't work, you didn't eat. That's how that went. So I did a lot of work because I did a lot of eating. <laughs> You know, I, so I had my duties. I was the youngest in my family. I am the, still the youngest, remarkably so. Uh, uh, and so, you know, I had a brother and sister that uh, they would do more advanced things. But as I grew, you know, I took on those jobs. And so, you know, outside I did my share of the mowing and, and uh, we had a bank out front. And, you know, I, I, uh, from pretty early age, I would, I'd get out there and I would weed whack that. And I, you know, that was part of my job. Uh, one of the things I absolutely despised, though, was we had a big garden. And they took a, a no-tolerance policy on weeds. <laughs> and so they would take us out early in the morning and they would go, all right, this is your row, this is your row, and this is your row. And you're going to go up and you're taking out on your hands and knees every little weed. And when you're done with your row, we got another set of rows right here. Like we would spend hours out, out in this garden here, even in the hot sun. I, I don't know that it was so much about weeds as much as giving us something to do. <laughs> but it was a chore. It was, it was what we did. And, and so we reaped that benefit when it came, you know, the end of summer, beginning of the fall. And we would... We'd pull out the potatoes and we would harvest the, the, the tomatoes and green beans and all the different things that we would get, you know, because we had worked on that. That was part of our chores. It wasn't necessarily fun. It wasn't necessarily what I would have chosen, but it was integral to what, who we were as a family and, and making everything work, even inside, you know. So those are outside jobs, inside jobs. We would have to take our parts with cleaning the house. I think it was a factor of me being the youngest. I always got stuck cleaning the bathroom. Like every time. I, I, it must have been, uh, I, I forget how we did it, whether it was just kind of, we started from the oldest to the youngest, but bathroom cleaning was always left <laughs> when it came my time around to, to get a job handed out. So I did a lot of bathroom cleaning all through my years. Chores. Chores. They're... They're part of what makes a family work. Uh, some of the things are just kind of necessary things. Some of the things are hard things. Some of them are kind of enjoyable, you know, part of that. I, you know, I actually enjoyed uh, mowing the grass and taking care of the outside. That was, that was a, you know, it was a job to do, but it was something that, that I enjoyed and, and, and reveled in. Um, and we would understand and appreciate how much of a part of that would be of bringing up kids to teach them responsibility and uh, teach them some life skills that they're going to be able to use. But I would say one of the most powerful things about chores is the sense of belonging, of going, whether, whether I, it was a job that I liked or not, you know, that formed my identity, my connection with my, my family over those years of going, you know, I'm in on this. I've got skin in the game. I've put some elbow grease in this. When we harvest the, when we harvest the, the, the garden, you know, I, I put work in on that. It was us doing this together, making this all happen. And so in many ways, this is what we're talking about today, being part of God's family. We don't have chores exactly assigned to us, but uh, uh, we have this role we have roles with one another. And so I just want to take us down through kind of a, a little bit of a, a way to think about serving together here. So we're going to continue kind of with this family thing. So there's the type of serving that really isn't about getting a whole lot done, at least for our part. It's more about just kind of being together, right? You can think back when the kids were little and it wasn't that they were particularly helpful, but they wanted to be part of it. Uh, so, so I heard a, of a, a guy that was out in the yard, he was working and, and his young son came out and he says, dad, I want to help. He says, sure. So he went over and he gave him this job and says, you know, you do this, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to work on this part. And he's not working, but for about one, two minutes and suddenly his son's right there going, what you doing, dad? 
well, I'm working. Well, I'd like to help you. Well, I want to show you this job right over here. Why don't you get this done? You know, he kept on doing this, but the son was young enough that he, it wasn't so much about the job. It was about being with dad. And there is a part of serving that is very much about this, of just going, it is about being together with one another. It's not just getting a task done. It's not whether you do it right or wrong or how well you do it. It is about that togetherness there. My brother and sisters, we had a powerful relationship because we spent many year, days in that garden. Not really. We couldn't stand each other. <laughs> but I remember the times I had spent with my dad or my mom doing stuff around the house. There's, there's that part of serving. There's a part of serving that is because you are actually helpful. You finally kind of get old enough and you're capable enough and you're going, you know, you know I, I want to bring you along and you're going to help out in certain ways and you're able to handle the responsibilities. And so you're kind of a contributing part of this. And as the child grows, they, they kind of start to learn that and they, they, they kind of enjoy that part of going, you know what, I understand that I'm not just kind of helping mom hand a, 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 a plate into the dishwasher, but you know, I have skills and I have strength and I have abilities and suddenly now I'm starting to feel really a part of it and then I'm contributing part of this. I believe that no one is here by accident part of G3. That's not the image that we get from the New Testament. It says that God is drawing people together in churches and groups and communities with special purposes and that you're here and you're going to bring your contribution to this because we need one another in all of this. And there's something really wonderful about that as we begin to explore and experience that. But of course, as kids get older, it's not just about being helpful now. It's about getting some stuff done. And so we enter into the stage of serving because you're forced to. I know nothing of this with four teenagers in my house right now. Right? It has nothing to do about the chore chart. It has nothing to do about what really needs to get done. It doesn't matter how many dirty dishes are in the sink, you know, whether we've got clean dishes for even dinner that night, you're getting forced to do this because it's got to get done, right? It, 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 it doesn't have a very good attitude necessarily. It doesn't frame this right. It sometimes even looks to go, how, how's the, the, the uh, easiest way that I can get through this type of a thing, what kind of corners can I cut, right? It's a serving, not out of the heart, but just simply because you're forced to. Now, we don't have that really in God's family. We don't force anyone, but there is this sense in real families of going, boy, I feel like I'm pushed and I'm made to do something. That's not how God's family works. In fact, the New Testament speaks against this type of a thing of going, we're not here to force one another. But it's not so much about the force as it is about the attitude, right? Um, in, uh, in 1 Peter, Peter talks about, he goes, you know what? Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. You know what I love that, about that verse? Is that first century Christians were real people too, <laughs> They knew what they were supposed to do. It was a good thing. I don't know if I really want to do that. I'm not sure about that. You know, it's such a bother to me and I'm kind of tired. You know, they, they had to be reminded, you know, watch, watch the attitude. Serving is what we are about. And don't get to the place where you're, you're seeing this as a force too. The other side of that coin is then serving just because it has to get done, right? My kids, uh, you know, we, we have to feed and take the dog out and there can be grumbling about that. But eventually they kind of sort of get the idea of going, you know, the dog's got to eat, the dog's got to go to the bathroom. And so they have a little bit more push there because they have a sense of, well, it's got to get done. They may not be excited about it and really lean into that, but... They go, yeah, it gets, it gets done. That is a real part of serving. I don't want to stand up here today and go, boy, 
Come and serve at church, serve in your community, and everything is going to be sunshine and roses. Sometimes it's not. I have a saying that I go, there's a ditch digging part to every job, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's just a the part that's a little bit, it's not as fun, it's not as great, but it's got to get done. It's something important. For a lot of you, you come on Sundays or you participate in a, in a group somewhere, and there's a lot of other work, a lot of what other people have done that kind of provide for that. So, you know, the band comes on Wednesday nights and they spend lots of hours. They don't just show up on Sunday and pull this off. They work on this and the tech people in the back. And, you know, we have a lot of people that are kind of in the background that it doesn't look as glamorous, but it needs to be done. And when it comes together, it's a great thing. But we don't measure it by whether it's fun or whether it's uh, um, something spectacular by itself. We just go, you know what, that, that, that's kind of part of serving. I think there's something uh, good about that. We don't want to leave it in this place of duty. But we understand that there's a part of life that that, that has a, happened to it. But let's kind of get, you know, those are some realistic pictures of it. Let's, let's kind of get into, into deeper aspects of this. There's the serving because you're good at it. We're hitting that uh, stride as well in our household. So we got four kids. Two of them are cooks. When we're in a pinch, guess who I call? Hey, can you make this? It's not Ben. Unless it's wild game meat. Whatever you did, or was it you or Steve that taught him how to do a, it was Steve. How to do a, he made a steak that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, all right. He's like, you do this, you do that, you cook it, you flip it over, and it's good. <laughs> it's his one dish. <laughs> that and cold cereal, right? We, we call, we call uh, uh, Sean or Kate because they're good at it. it the other two can, can do it with some help. You know, and they'll, they'll have that responsibility. It's not that they're... They, they don't cook at all, but in a pinch, we know who to kind of go to. They, they know their way around a kitchen. They know how to put some things together. They know how to fix it, fix it up right. God's family works like that. First Peter says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Now, that's kind of a complicated way of going, look, God has enabled you in different ways here in 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 kind of spiritual ways and just kind of normal ways that we would talk about abilities god has given you all these different things so that you can hand out grace i want you to catch that that's kind of a hard to see here in in the wording but in that first sentence God goes, you know what? I could just bypass you and I could get, I'll give him some grace and I'll give her some grace and I'll take care of this and I'll take care of that. Like he's all powerful, right? He doesn't need any help. And yet what Peter describes here is he goes, look, God has chosen to work through all of us to distribute his grace. That means that he has given you something that other people need. Serving isn't just about getting it done. Serving is certainly not about being forced to. It's understanding God has empowered you with some special talents, abilities, spiritual talents that, that goes other people need. And he's going to work through you. And so he gives two examples. He goes, look, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. Why? Not just so things can get done, but so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. You have been given something to contribute. Every one of you. Uh, don't, don't mistake just the, the things that are easily seen. There's, there's lots of different abilities in this room. And so we, we, want, to, we want to utilize that. But then there's the type of serving that's because we just do more together. We get that, right? Uh, if, uh, if one of us just does something by itself, it's going to go really, really slow. If we have a lot of people come out for that work day, guess what? Many hands make light work. When we're united together, we accomplish big 
things. If you notice, though, we kind of built a big building. We didn't need to. We, 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 did, we, we did fit down there, right? It was, it was working. It was all right. It was a little goofy, and we had our cattle shoot. If you, it, if you weren't part of our church when we were down there, we had the cattle run, that one, one lane uh, a staircase that you had to come up into the church for, and you, you hope that nobody else was coming down or coming up, right? It, we, we made it work. But then we built this, not to be comfortable, but to do bigger and greater things. We need to serve together to do that. We, uh, we, we've given ourselves this opportunity, and now we want to maximize the strengths and the abilities that God has gathered here in serving together and saying we want to be bigger. Paul gives us a bit of this picture. He says, Look, now these are the gifts, the, the abilities in, in, in various facets of that, gifts that Christ gave to the church. He names some of the, the top ones, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. They're supposed to do everything and everyone else can just sit down. <laughs> uh, that's not what that says. I don't like that screen. Oh, oh okay. No, their responsibility this is a better screen. This, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do God's work and to build up the church. Yep, there's some leadership positions. But God's vision is he's going, look, I, I, I've distributed all these gifts, all these spiritual gifts, all these talents, so that you'd work together to build up the church, the body of Christ, and this will continue as, as we get traction, as we work together, as we get that cooperation going. Watch. This will continue until we all come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, I need to do a little bit of translation here. Like, like he doesn't say, look, you're going to do this so that you can build a really big church. You're going to do this so that you can do a big community day. He doesn't kind of give a very specific goal like that. But do you read this? And are you sensing that going, look, I've given you gifts and ability. I've given you leadership. I've given you talents. So that not just for yourself, but for something that's greater. And as we come together, as we cooperate together, we are going to see a larger reality take shape. Do you catch that sense in this? It's not in the language that maybe we would put in modern times, but it's there. And we need everyone together, every part working, right? That's what serving is about. But then there's this serving just because you belong. That you're going, you know, I serve because I'm part of this. And we very much start to get closer to this whole idea of being part of God's family. Like, I didn't serve, I didn't serve uh, my family. I didn't weed the garden or mow the yard because necessarily I was the best at it. Or because uh, we were doing anything too grand. As much as I understood, hey, we're doing this together. That's why I always got the bathroom. The bathroom had to get done. But I got that, I'm like, you know what? If we're going to clean the rest of the house, we've got to clean the bathroom. If any place you're going to clean, you're going to clean the bathroom. I guess it just fell to me. I accepted my lot in life. But I did it because I belonged to the family. Whether I had a good attitude on that day or not, whether I did a, even a, a good job or not, I did it because I was part of the family. And scripture teaches us about God's family of going, look, serving isn't just this functional thing about getting something done. It is about our connection to one another. It is the fabric. It's the weave of the fabric. It's the glue that holds us together. Paul puts it this way in Romans 12. For, each, for just as each of us has one body with many members... These members don't have all the same function. No. So we in Christ, though we are many, we form one body, but each member belongs to all the others. 
We have different gifts according to the grace he's given to us. And then he goes into a long section. I'm not going to read all of it. He goes, look, if you lead, lead. If you sing, sing. If you serve, serve. If, you, you know, if you're a person of mercy, be a person of mercy. If you're a person of hospitality, do that. Use your strength because we need each other. What you do not get from the New Testament at all, at all, is any sense of kind of superstar status. It keeps on bringing, actually the people kind of wanted to bring that up and go, oh, this person's, no, no, no. We need every part of us, all of you. There is something that God has brought you here to give and to contribute that we can't do without you. I believe that, 100%. You're not here by mistake. Now think about the other side of that coin, though. That means if you withhold that, if you go, no, I'm not going to bother, there is something that God wants to be doing. There is a grace that he wants to be giving through you that cannot happen because you are not uh, uh, giving, using the gift that he has given you. We belong to one another. We need each other. We depend on it. Now, all these things are, are good and right, and uh, we, we, we kind of get them immediately. But there's one last part of this, uh, a theme that continually shows up anytime any writer, whether it's Paul or Peter or other people, uh, talk about serving, they always come back to this truth. Every passage is grounded in this. Serving is because we love each other. It's not because we're superstars at something. It's not because it's just we got to get something done out of duty. It's not because we're accomplishing even something magnificent and great and wonderful. And I hope we are. But at the core of serving is a heart of love. It's about an orientation to life of going because I have been found, because I have been saved, because I have been adopted into God's family, he accepted me in love as I was and now is working through me. That is how I live my life, is the absolute antidote to a self-centered life. You can be successful, you can be amazing, you can be accomplished and have completely missed the whole point of life. They always tie this back. Just a couple of these passages. Look, we had read from 1 Peter. The verse is right around it. Above all, love each other deeply. Not just kind of love, you know, kind of the bumper sticker love. It's the Lucy from the Peanuts. She, she goes, I love humanity. It's the people I can't stand, right? <laughs> no, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. It's, you, you know what's that great about that verse? Is it, says, it doesn't say love each other deeply because we're all wonderful, perfect people. We never make any mistakes. You love deeply because there's going to be things that are going to need to be covered over. We're going to bump into each other. We're going to get a little knucklehead every once in a while. We need to love each other deeply, offer hospitality without grumbling. How about this? This is another passage we read from Romans 12. Same context. Love must be sincere. You can't fake this. Hates what is evil, cling to what's good, be devoted to one another in love. Serving is how that happens. Because when I serve, it's not just about what I get, it is about what I give. God has given to me and so I freely give to others. I give to you, I give to those that aren't here yet. Because I do this in love. Remember last week we talked about being devoted, what the early church did 
at the very beginning, right? They had that big day where the first, the first church service, 3,000 got saved. They were baptized and it said they were devoted to the teaching, to fellowship, breaking of bread, and to the stealers. No. What was the fourth one? Prayer. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like being devoted to the Steelers of sorts. <laughs> See what Paul does? Be devoted to one another. That's where Christianity takes us. It's not about a service. It's not about an activity. It's ultimately about our connection to one another. And we begin to shape ourselves and see ourselves of going, for me to really follow God, I have to serve others. He came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life away. And that's what he calls us to do. But we do it together, mutually, like a family. And we get rewarded with the bonds of belonging. We get rewarded with accomplishing big things. We get rewarded by feeling a sense of connection because we're devoted to one another in love. So, in your uh, pews there, or not pews, in your seats, um, you have brochures. These are just generic, general brochures of the, from the church. All the different types of ministries that we, we have going or have had going. You know, this past year has been pretty rough on our ministries. Uh, we've kind of kept a, a couple of the basic ones, but as we are waking up, as we're moving into this summer, we are gonna step into this again, and this is just for you to take home and to look over and to go, wow, there's a lot of things that are going on um, that have gone on, and we want to expand as we go forward. That was why we built this. That's why we exist, to serve one another, and our community. And I want you to start being thoughtful about going, okay, where's my part in this? Why has God drawn me here? What do I have to contribute? But not just to contribute, but where, where do I belong in this? Because love is serving and serving is love. And I want to, I want to step into that and be a full part of God's family. As we go through the summer over these next couple months, we're gonna have kind of more practical ways of how you're gonna get engaged with ministries. We're still kind of waking up. We wanted to give you just an overview though, especially for a lot of the newer folks that we've had come over this past year. You haven't really seen who or what we are yet. And um, honestly, even if you have been here for over a year, you haven't seen who and what we are yet because we spent so much time on the building before we were kind of locked into that little clamshell. Just imagine what God is going to be doing in a year's time as we come together, serve, and give of ourselves as one family. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that you have not called us to walk this alone, but you have once again called us to be part of that family, and being part of that family means something that we have a place, we have a role, we have a connection with one another. We, we give and are given to, we love and are loved. And out of your excess, out of your abundance, you have given us gifts and you call us to be a partner with you in distributing your grace to one another and pouring that in, out into our community to people that are so desperate for grace in their life. So, Holy Spirit, do your work at activating us, waking up our hearts, waking up our imaginations for how you want us to partner with you and with one another.